You know, as, as we start to talk about it, when we look at goal one, I think the overriding thing that we're addressing this year is just delving into those new standards to make sure that we are really understanding what it is that we need to teach. Um, we're immensely proud of our teachers. We've been working on these intensely since the end of last year, working at the grade level, uh, at level with the grade level teams, um, going through everything with a fine tooth comb and developing our units um, and making sure that we're hitting what we're supposed to be hitting. We have noticed in, in our PLCs and in, in our larger faculty meetings that our teachers' language is changing. That they're, that they're talking the language of the, of the standards. That they're able to read a standard and understand what they don't understand. <laughs> and to be able to verbalize that and say, you know, I just don't really get this. And there's been several times that we've had to, I, I have Googled more sites and more definitions to find out, well, what does this really mean and where's an example of this? So it's been quite an education for us as well. We have developed a lesson, I mean, a unit plan template, a common template for our teachers to use so that when they submit their unit plans to us in advance, which they do so that we can go through them, um, that we're able to do that, um, you know, on a common basis. And then we can meet with them individually. And of course, we've got the lesson plans when we do our PPR works, walks. So that, that is something that, you know, I, I think our teachers are uh, very uh, tightly engaged in in this year. We, um, as well, we are using our MAP data, you know, on a, on a related basis to be looking at that in order to get all of our kids to proficiency. I think it is the single most valuable tool that we've been given to use since I've been with this district, possibly since I've been in education, because it enables us to find out very quickly what our children know. It enables us to not only determine what they know on a criteria basis, but also how they relate to students across the nation, across the state, and, and with their peers in the classroom. It enables our teachers to look at the gaps that are occurring very closely on, on a local level, so to speak, in their classroom, so that then we can address them um, as, as a school on a larger level. We are also beginning to analyze our second round of MAP data. We are very pleased to see, um, we had um, team meetings last week, and just on the grade levels that we talked to, I was able to look at and compare some data on students and look at the percentage of students in each classroom that had grown, that had made growth, um, not just grown, but looked at the expected growth that we would like them to have, um, which has implications for later on down the road when we're looking at our state assessment data. So that has been very important to us, and it's been an eye-opener for the teachers because now it's a nice objective piece of, of information that they have on their students. We, too, have been goal-setting. Um, we have been very... Um, gratified to walk down the classrooms, walk down our hallways and have our students say, do you want to know what I did on my MAP score? <laughs> Which was language, you know, it was a conversation we did not have a year ago at this time. So we've seen some very nice gains. And so I'm, I'm very excited to finally get the MAP testing done, which will be, it takes us three full weeks of back-to-back -back testing sessions in order to complete our MAP, our MAP testing. So we will have that to begin our new school year with. That has been uh, very helpful to us. Um, it, it also has been good to see our teachers. That's the first thing they're doing now. I'm not having to tell them, okay, I uploaded the test results. Go into your classrooms and you can print your reports. Those things, if I forget to upload before I go home, I hear about it the next morning. Why don't I have my reports? So I'm glad to see that. That's a, that's a, uh, a little critique that I'm very happy to have and be able to uh, to uh, satisfy teachers with. They're using greater use of Descartes to actually look at the writ band that their child is working in and to, to uh, then craft instruction for the children in those areas. Um, that leads me into a discussion then of the whole RTI process. And we are deepening our understanding of, of what's the most effective way to approach RTI in our building. We started um, we started on a school-wide basis just to get everybody's feet wet. We took the first 30 minutes, 35 minutes of the school day, and um, everybody did RTI. And there was switching, and we looked at kids across the, the, the broad spectrum at that time. We were using grade, which did not give us anywhere near the specificity that, that MAP does. We've kind of um, evolved from that, and we're looking at it more on a classroom level or a grade level and um, rearranging students according to that, according to the times that we have available within that grade level for teachers to work with. Um, it has been 
that's entailed a lot of work on our part, working with teachers individually, um, because it, that conversation has had to grow to where we're talking to the teachers, let me see what you're doing with the child. What, what have you found that they need? What's going to work for you? And we're seeing a lot of opportunities across the day where teachers are able to work four and five students at a time. That is really greatly improving their achievement. Um, we are, one other thing that we've done, again, related to goal one, is that we have um, implemented the use of specific direct intentional vocabulary instruction, grades two through five. We have noticed that over the years, even from the time that we got our CTBS data, that vocabulary is a weak area for us. It is critical in reading su success that students be able to understand and have a wide vocabulary. We, um, we purchased the, um, the, the name escapes me, Sadler Oxford. Sadler Oxford. Sadler Oxford, yes, the vocabulary <laughs> books for um, our students, and it was quite an expense, so we really considered this carefully. Um, and the teachers are having a lot of success with it. Um, it teaches words in context. It gives them a lot, of, a lot of opportunities to use that new vocabulary. They're noting that students' writing is improving, that their speech is improving. Mm -hmm. And what I'm looking at, at this new round of MAP data, is what I want to see is that those sub-scores that we get in reading, that I want to see that gap start to disappear between the vocabulary and the mean. And I, and I can honestly say that in, in the fourth and the fifth grade, which I've analyzed so far, I'm starting to see that that vocabulary is moving closer to the mean. So that is indi an indica indication to me that we're seeing some success in that area. Um, with respect to the student engagement, um, goal three, I mean goal two, I'm sorry, and, and the, the, the quality instruction in the classroom every day, we too are concentrating again on our PPR walks. Um, on to make sure that we're seeing appropriate learning targets that they're being referred to throughout the course of the lesson. My bi our big thing this year is that we want to see teachers stop their instruction periodically, 15 minutes or 20 minutes into the lesson, and do like take a temperature of the classroom. Are we understanding? Give me a quick thumbs up, even just a quick, not even an exit slip, just kind of like a, a, an interim assessment to see if kids are getting where they need to be. Um, I will say that we've been in classrooms several times where we have seen teachers now comfortable enough to just stop the lesson at that point and say, you know, boys and girls, we're going to pull back. We're going to go back over, you know, close your book, look up here for a minute. In the past, they would, with an administrator in the room, they've not always been comfortable to do that. So we're pleased to see that because that's an indication on our part that they're paying attention to what the students are learning and what they're not learning. We would. Um, we are emphasizing, our, our, we know that writing has always been an area for growth for <coughs> us, that we are emphasizing a differentiation in the writing topics. We, we do need to get students writing firsthand about what they're interested in before we move them into prompts that everybody has to do at the same time. And we've also implemented a school-wide use of a four-square method so that it builds upon the instruction that is occurring in the previous year. We're hoping to see great strides in there and we, we thoroughly value our instructional coach who um, has brought that to us. Um, as far as student um, engagement, we do have, as uh, Mr. Raleigh alluded to, we're taking full advantage of Read 180 and System 44. We now have three sessions of Read 180, two sessions of System 44. We're looking to add whatever we can next year. It's, it, it's a matter of space and cost. We will <coughs> do what we need because we certainly have more students who would benefit from that. Um, we're looking at our gap um, with, with all of our, 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 uh, less, our less advantaged groups. And one of the things is, again, like the RTI, it's an evolutionary process for us, I believe. Um, it's not just a matter of what our disabilities are or what the numbers of our students are. We need <coughs> to recognize that even within a given disability, that there's a continuum of characteristics of the learner that we need to be addressing. Um, and, and that is, we're working with, we work very closely with our school psychologists to look at what's the best strategy, what's the best program, um, where do I need to have this child? And, and I will give full credit to my special education teachers. They're the, they are such, so hard working and um, <coughs> they just never stop. They never stop looking for what they can do for the child and they collaborate so well together to pick up where they where their each other's strengths are. 
Um, our KSID program, um, this is about our fourth year, is that correct, or is it about our sixth, sixth year? <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, Marge is in charge of that. It just, it's, it's so successful, what can I say? It seems like it's been there forever. So I'm going to let Marge go ahead and talk about that at this time. And, and Pat, you're exactly right. Um, what's really exciting is the fact that our students who are now in fifth grade have never known anything else except for our positive behavior program. And I think finally this year we're really starting to see the benefits of our program because we have reduced our numbers of discipline referrals and I think we've also at the same time though created a culture in the building that we're really beginning to see um, of what can we do to intervene not only what can we do to punish or to give as a consequence but what else can we be doing to help our students who haven't been so successful when it comes to behavior and some of the things that um, we as a committee have kind of put out front for tasks for this year have been to continue to work with our student leadership team who bus buddies with our younger students on the bus. Um, they've also kind of given us some support as far as ideas or where we need to move our program. Um, something else that we're looking at is what else can we do as far as interventions are concerned, um, whether it's a small support group that our counselor has with a specific skill that our students need to be taught, or when do Pat and I need to go into the classroom as administrators and kind of have a conversation with the students about proper behavior or expected behavior. Um, we've also taken a look at um, our buses and we've tried to build those relationships with our bus drivers and our bus drivers are getting much better at coming in and talking to us right as they're having an issue so that we can address mm -hmm. it together with our students and with the bus driver and we can kind of resolve things. So we're very proud of our program. We're very proud of the fact that um, our numbers of referrals are declining, but also the fact that I know when we reported last year, we said that we had 5% of our students receiving over 50% of our discipline referrals. And to date, we only have, um, I believe, three students who have had more than two discipline referrals. So we are really kind of starting to reduce those numbers and we're trying to um, work very hard to put in places um, lessons to everyone as to how to treat other people with respect and how to get along. Okay. Okay. Do you have any questions for us? Good. Okay. Sounds like you're doing a great job. We have Thank a great you. staff. <laughs> I mean, we 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 truly do. Um, our, our teachers care so much for our students. Um, one of the things that I am most proud of is that. Um, our communication with our parents and our community I, I think is um, just spectacular. Our teachers make uh, concerted efforts to to call to meet with parents. Um, I know this year alone that you know I, I have you know put myself out there and to the teachers and said you know we need to meet more frequently. We need to pull people in because our parents they'll ask us you know, what can we do to help? What can we do to help? So the, the more frequently we can meet and, and assist our parents in those areas, um, you know, I, I think it's advantageous to us. I do, I do want to also acknowledge the benefit of the Compass Learning Program that the district, I, and I do want to thank you publicly for making that affordable to us as at a school level. Mm -hmm. And that has been wonderful. Our kids get on it, our parents love it, they can see the reports. So we're, we're looking to see great gains as a result of that as well. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hey. How are you all today? Okay. I'm Christy Jeffers, the principal at Pioneer Elementary, and this is my new assistant principal, Michelle Cobb. Hi. Jim Michelle's been with us in different roles in the district, and I'm very happy to have her at Pioneer. I do have to share her with Ryland, but um, she's doing a great job in both schools, and um, Kathy and I um, have worked really well figuring out ways to share her. So. <laughs> Well, um, last year when I came to you, I was brand new to Piner, and um, we were looking at a lot of um, a lot of plans for how we wanted to make improvements. And I'm I'm very happy to say that um, what we did last year was was very effective. Um, our scores 
we improved our overall accountability um, index by over six points. We moved up 235 places in Kentucky elementary school rankings. And um, in our gap, which is something that had really concerned me when we first looked at our scores from the previous year, um, our reading gap was, I mean, we were very close to not making annual yearly progress because of the reading gap. And this past year, our scores showed that we had basically eliminated the reading gap. So that was very exciting. It was very validating for all of our teachers and all their hard work. We also narrowed the, map, uh, the math um, gap quite a bit. So I was very happy with that. And the most effective strategies that, that I felt that we used, um, first of all, was that, that goal setting. Um, last year, we weren't into using MAP as much last year, so our goal setting was more based on the KCCT. And we, we analyzed our um, common assessments, we charted them, graphed them, the children did individual goal setting, and there was grade level goal setting, and um, I think it was very motivational for the children, and it kind of set the tone for what we're doing this year. Um, this year we're using MAP, as you've heard from other elementary schools. We're using MAP to do our goal setting, and, and again, the children are so motivated by that. Um, they, they have just been bouncing up and down the halls. They're so excited that they've met or exceeded their goals. Uh, they just want to come up and talk to you about it. Um, so we're, we're very pleased with, with uh, the culture that we're creating and, and helping to foster with that, setting goals and working hard to, to reach the goals. And, and part of that is the students are involved in setting the strategies. How are they going to reach their goals? What kind of things can they do and take personal responsibility for uh, reaching their goals? So it, it means something to them when they do reach it because they have a personal investment in it. Um, last year, we also implemented a lot of live scoring in both open response and on demand. And um, we used um, our instructional coach last year to really work with the teachers on how to do live scoring and how to incorporate it uh, regularly so that the students were getting a lot of practice on what's expected of them. Um, they, they really responded well to that. We did focus a lot of our um, open response and um, writing in, in the area of reading and math. And um, I, I think that this year we've, we've learned that we also need to expand that out to other content areas. So this year our teachers, in addition to doing reading and math weekly live scoring, they're um, also incorporating social studies and science and, and getting more practice in those areas. Because they're very specific and a little bit different than what the, they have to do in um, reading or math. Um, we worked with um, sticking to the timelines last year. Um, it, it was very effective for the teachers to focus their instruction and make sure that they stayed on track and covered the content that they needed to cover. Um, one of the areas that <coughs> we didn't make progress in was in social studies and in, in talking further with the teachers. Um, what we found was that they were, were really concentrating on one aspect of social studies, the historical perspective, or the economics more than the historical perspective. And the historical perspective is so much more in-depth and it has to cover so much more time on the timeline. So this year we're really addressing sticking with the timeline, um, providing additional uh, resources for the teachers and then working with different members um, throughout the, the district. We worked with an instructional coach at a, another school who was very, very helpful. And um, so the teachers feel much more confident this year about being able to teach and um, help those children learn what they need to learn in social studies to do well in that part of the test. Last year we started a new RTI um, process that was new to Piner and um, it's, it's basically where we used um, data from, um, started with grade and GMAID at the beginning of the year and then we transitioned into using the MAP data when we took that on in December. Um, but looking at those specific areas uh, that the students were struggling with and working with small groups to do um, some research-based instruction and weekly progress monitoring. Um, we, do, um, we started a team to review that data weekly so that we could monitor the progress of the children and then follow up with their um, interventionists to see were there areas that they needed to, to tweak or to change or you know, how could we improve. And so that's, that seemed to be very um, um, effective, um, especially as evidenced by our scores. Um, this year we are continuing that process, but it's starting to change a little bit. And um, I believe um, Pat Getz used the term evolving. Our RTI process is evolving. I think what's happened is with, with math, <coughs> we've, we've seen now that um, 
with this test, we don't only know which students are on grade level or below grade level. We know which students are above grade level and how far above grade level they are. And that's really caused my teachers to think, well, how can we best meet the needs of all our students, not just the ones that are struggling? How can we meet the, the needs of our higher students that need to be challenged? And um, we need them to grow, too, especially with our new accountability model. There's that growth piece in there. We want all of our students to grow. So um, our RTI is turning more into a writ band instruction approach where we are in providing enrichment and challenging opportunities for the students that are at or above grade level and continuing to work with the students that need the, the help to catch up with their peers. Um, and we're still progress monitoring and we still keep a really close eye on their data. But um, I'm excited that the teachers are starting to take more responsibility for that and wanting to do the differentiation within their classrooms rather than sending their children out to another teacher to work with. They, they want to know how their kids are doing. They want to use the Descartes with their kids and, and know that it's, it's making a difference. Um, the READ 180 and System 44 programs are just fantastic. We have seen incredible growth um, in our students' reading scores. Um, we had groups last year in third, fourth, and fifth grade, and all of them just made incredible progress. Um, one of the things that we found with the program was that it didn't necessarily teach the writing part as, as in-depth and as well as we would like. So our READ 180 teachers, System 44 teachers, are working with the classroom teachers to incorporate those students into the weekly on-demand and um, open response writing so that they are getting the same experiences that all their the peers are getting. Um, this year we're continuing um, to do that regular weekly live scoring in all content areas. Uh, we're differentiating, differentiating our instruction with our map data. Um, the Compass Learning is a wonderful piece, and again, um, as uh, the previous group said, we are just so thankful to have that at the elementary level. It provides our students a chance every week, at least once a week, they get to go on for 45 minutes and work at their own level because the, the program creates a path that's individualized and it's at their perfect instructional level. Um, and then the teachers are also using it in their classrooms as centers or when the children have some time they can go and work on those. So we're, we're really excited about the, the Compass Learning Program. Um, we're focusing on using student work for um, examples, modeling proficient and distinguished student work and um, recognizing students. We're um, we post up the honor roll, put the names in the paper. We have um, KCCT medals that we'll be giving out here in um, January for our KCCT celebration, kind of get the kids ready for starting the new year, and focus on what they need to learn to get ready for our, our state test this year. Um, we do work ethic three times a year, and we just completed our first work ethic program. We had a, a wonderful turnout for that. I think we had 175 that were in the work ethic program. And uh, we, I'm starting a new board where weekly they'll, they'll be turning in their perfectly wonderful work where um, they can bring down um, one paper from every classroom and get recognized as a, a model for good student work. Um, we are going to continue doing our map goal setting. Um, the students are just, they responded so well to that. Um, and in this year, you may have seen us um, in, in the news or on the paper, but we've, we've been blessed with a, just this profusion of technology. <laughs> so between um, Duke Energy providing us with a, an iPad classroom, which has just been just a wonderful experience for those children and that teacher, um, to the Discovery Education Prizes that we have with that mobile laptop lab. Um, in addition, we purchased projectors for every classroom that didn't have a smart board. We do have one smart board at every grade level. and um, and document projectors. So all the teachers, it's, it's been a school-wide um, effort to, to learn how to effectively incorporate instructional technology, and the teachers have just taken the ball and run with it. Um, and our goal is, of course, not only for the teachers to use it, but for the children to use it. And so it's very fun to walk in and see these students um, using the technology and showing us how to use it, because yeah. they catch on so much quicker than we do. Um, we are continuing the practice of um, using focused learner targets and um, having congruent formative assessments. Um, those really need to go hand in hand. So if the teacher knows what the student is supposed to master, they can incorporate a, a formative assessment into their lesson and see if the students are, in fact, mastering what they were supposed to master. And if not, that gives the teacher an opportunity to to spot check right then and there and work with the students and, and help them understand what it is that they didn't understand. Um, 
another technique that we're using, especially um, with our social studies, is the, the flashbacks, uh, where the, the teachers go back and pull content from previously taught lessons and have like a little daily quiz. Um, and that, that's one of the ways that we can cover those areas with so much content like science and social studies and help to refresh that and keep it in the, the forefront of the student's mind and not just learn it and then have to come back to it you know, several months later. Um, so th that's been very effective. Um, Accountable talk and effective questioning techniques are something that I look for in my daily walks. Um, I, I'm wanting to hear the students uh, deepen their understanding and have the teachers pushing them with questions <laughs> to dig down and really understand and um, apply what they've learned. So it's, it's not just about memorizing facts, but it's about taking what they've learned, applying it in, in different situations. Um, also writing across the content areas. The students not only talk about what they've learned, but then they reflect, reflectively write about what they learn. And um, that really helps them to learn to express themselves in writing. Um, we've continued our PLC meetings. We do those um, once a week, either PLC meetings or job embedded training. And during those meetings, we uh, talk about how the students are doing with um, their common assessments. We kind of have open time where the teachers can bring a problem of practice to us and we can brainstorm. Um, and then we also have lessons that our instructional coach brings back and, and teaches the teachers to um, continue their learning and their understanding of, especially with the new content standards. We're using um, the new Math and Focus program. Uh, last year we started probably about in November when the teachers said this, the, the, the math program we were using just isn't meeting our needs. We're concerned it's not gonna meet our needs when we get the new standards. So we spent months uh, researching, visiting, um, seeing what would best um, meet the new content standards, and we settled on Math and Focus, and we've been very pleased with the program. And um, in terms of our, our, our goal three, we have many, many of our students uh, participating in after-school activities. We have a myriad of activities for them to participate in. Um, we have about 90% that actually participate in after-school activities, if I don't count the things that we do during the day. Um, we would like that to be 100%. Um, a, a lot of the students that are not joining are students that are transient, that kind of come and go, and we have a hard time incorporating them into after-school activities, but we, we still encourage them and try them to get them involved as much as possible. Um, we are in our probably our sixth year of CASID at Pioneer, and this year we've tried to kind of revitalize it because we have a lot of new staff members, and some of the things that were set up previously, like our motto, were kind of cumbersome for the kids to remember. So we, we kind of simplified it, and um, you know our, our our behavior goals are you know practice character counts, um, act safely, and work hard. Things that are easy for the kids to remember, and it comes up to the acronym PAW, which is you know where the the Panthers, and we have the little Panther PAW. So um, those are the things that we're continuing to do. Um, I'm just very excited and very pleased with all the hard work that our teachers and students have done and just that, that can-do attitude that everybody's displaying. And I'm very encouraged that we're going to do, do well and continue to do well. Do you have any questions for me? Those are awesome. Great. They are. Good work. Yep. Thank you. Well, thank you all very much, and we appreciate your continued support. First of all, I'd like to thank the board for all their support for helping us to be able to provide a quality education to our students at Taylor Mill. Our instructional coach that we've had the last couple years, three years, has been very valuable to us, and the knowledge that she's been able to help our teachers with and uh, therefore, by helping our teachers, it has helped our students instructionally. Also, our Compass Learning, um, what a wonderful tool to have, and MAP. We have so many things that we need to be grateful for, and, and we are thankful for those things and the board's support on those. I'd like to talk about the goals, and you know goal one. Goal one is all students will perform at or above grade level in numeracy and literacy. And goal two, we're going to talk about professional practices and quality instruction and best practices every day in every classroom, and then building relationships and a meaningful connection to students with goal three. With goal one, we are working very hard with the, um, the, the resources that we have. Um, we have, we were able to hire this year a reading teacher. Um, the board uh, pays half of that and then I pay the rest of it out of our allocation, our funds. But that has been very, very helpful for us. We have a reading uh, assistant 
that uh, Taylor Mill also does pay for. And then we have an RTA grant, a teacher with that, who works with our primary students. And the, the assistant works with the primary students. The reading teacher that we have this year uh, works with all grade levels, from primary and actually in some intermediate classes too. So that's been a big help with us. Our map data, we will be used to, uh, we use that for planning for differentiated instruction in the classroom. It's also utilized for tier two interventions to increase student performance and achievement. Our, RT, I, our RTI focus at Taylor Mill is threefold. Tier one is high quality instruction using best practices. Tier two is small group instruction to remediate areas of academic weaknesses with groups of students between six to eight. And tier three is more intensive groups with two to three students in each group. And we address reading, math, and behavior collaboratively using MAP scores and Descartes. Teachers are submitting uh, uh, progress monitoring daily, weekly, and receive feedback from the RTI committee. As grade level teams, teachers meet every six weeks to analyze data and adjust interventions, because we know that an intervention needs to take place for about six weeks to see if it's working. To assist teachers with RTI, common assessments are administered and analyzed according to the district timeline to ensure student learning and increase the proficiency outcomes. Our formative and summative assessments are utilized in the classroom a minimum of two to three times a week, and the data will be used to reteach and strengthen content knowledge. For progress monitoring, we're progress monitoring those students who score in the 25th percentile and below, and they're monitored weekly and targeted for Tier 2 RTI interventions. We have our READ 180, thank you, and our System 44, thank you, and we have, are having huge successes with both of those programs, and we're very pleased with that. The students love it, the teachers love it, and it's a win-win situation because our students are becoming better readers, and we thank you for that. Realizing that one of our weaknesses in writing, uh, we've talked uh, about how we can bring those scores up. And so one of the things we knew that we needed to do was get a school-wide writing plan. Last year when I talked with you all, I told you about a school-wide literacy plan that we were working on and adopting. We did adopt that, so now we are in the process of adopting a school-wide writing plan. And the writing plan, it's going to not only say what we do, but how we do it. One of the teachers said, why do we need a writing plan? We know when we have to do this piece and that piece, but that's not the important thing. It's how we're going to teach that. How are we going to help our students become better writers? And one of the ways is by writing all across the curriculum. Teachers have recently been trained in four square writing. And then our extended school services will uh, target students in grades three to five who are having difficulties in the areas of writing. We'll have a writer's block showcase, which will be a board in the hallway that will show students uh, work so we can uh, brag on that. And also, we will be doing monthly on-demand writing pieces. Any questions on goal one? OK. I, just, yeah, the writing, I'm just curious. Is, do you use phonetics in writing, or do you use, or does it have to be correct? It, it does need to be correct. Now, but it's developmentally appropriate. In kindergarten, you would expect them to use phonetics and partly in some first grade, but from then on it really needs to be accurate and, and written correctly. Mm -hmm. Okay, goal two, we're gonna talk about professional practices and quality instruction, best practices for every student in every classroom and every day. You know, this is one thing that's really, really important and all students, all students at Taylor Mill should have quality instruction every day by quality teachers and this is something that uh, we work very hard to, to, to do. We have PLCs, and our uh, PLCs meet once a month, where teachers can come to the table and bring concerns or things that they need to talk about. Perhaps one teacher is doing something one way, and another teacher needs, uh, you know, has some questions as to how it's working. They can brainstorm, talk together, and, um, and learn from each other that way. We have job embedded training, and our job embedded training uh, uh, with our instructional coach and also with Mrs. Carpenter, our assistant principal, and myself. We share specific uh, topics and strategies that will enhance student success. Along with this, our teachers have been trained in goal setting for MAP, and then the teachers then in turn 
talked with the students about goal setting and all our, in all classrooms they are doing goal setting and we know that if you have a goal you work really hard to reach that goal and you score better you do things better even on our own personal life if we sit down and we have a goal of things that we want to do and we keep a target on that and an eye on that we know that we can reach those goals if we work hard enough and that's what we want our students to know our RTI teams meet every six weeks to discuss our students and our uh, student concerns uh, the um, RTI committee meets every week and goes over the progress monitoring information so that we have some carryover with that. Um, technology is uh, very, very important. And at Taylor Mill, I'd love to say that we have smart boards in every classroom, but we don't. We have them in almost half of the classrooms, which is great. We did install um, new uh, projectors this year in five classrooms or six classrooms. And each one had uh, a document camera, so those are very useful. And one thing that I'm really um, pleased with is uh, sometimes our gym teachers think that, and other special area teachers think that their class isn't quite as important. But with, in conjunction with the PTA and Taylor Mill, we have installed in our gym a projector, and, um, and we have the capability now to use uh, I was in there the other day watching a class the teacher was teaching and they were doing Cotton Eye Joe and it was projected up on the, the screen and it was really, really neat. The kids loved it. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's real important that not only are we using it in the regular classrooms, but also in the gym, which is also a classroom. So I'm real pleased with that. Our, our KSID, we're in our, about our fifth year, I think, of KSID, and this has been a very positive approach for us. Our bus referrals are way down, and I <coughs> contribute that to this as the second year that we've brought our bus drivers in at the beginning of the year, talked about bus behavior. Um, you know, when, when you bring people in, if you feed them, they'll do anything. <laughs> so we fed them donuts, and boy, they were just jumped right on the bandwagon <laughs> with what we wanted to do, and our bus referrals are way down this year, so I'm really pleased with that. I did have a parent call me the other day and told me that I needed to ride the bus. I said, well, I might do that sometime, but not today. <laughs> we are doing PPR walks regularly, uh, along with per, uh, CO personnel. They come and join us also. And, um, and after January, when we come back, we're going to ask for teacher support in this by voluntarily joining us on learning walks. We think it's important to have the teachers involved uh, so they can go in the different classrooms. Our goal three is, any questions on goal two? Okay, goal three is building relationships and m making a meaningful connection. And Ms. Carpenter's gonna talk about that. It's, um, I've been at Taylor Mill for six months now, mm -hmm. and it's wonderful to see the dedication and the involvement and students truly, truly loving their school, and they want every bit of their life to be about their elementary school, so it's wonderful to see. They have so many opportunities that they can fit into any ca category, science club, energy-wise, cardio club, which is really cool because um, they even have a second and third grade club so that everyone can participate. Um, they have intramurals and girls on the run. They have so many things that everyone can be in, but it's neat because not only are they deliberate with their activities, but they are building the relationships that really make a difference and that make sure that kids want to come back to school. So even if they can't participate after school, the buy-in and the talk and all the things that, oh, look what I did. The yearning is wanting, to, they want to do it. So the children will find a way to assist their parents to make sure that they're participating in something, which is really a wonderful feat so that Taylor Mill shines when it comes to having such a high participation rate with fourth graders and fifth graders in the after-school program. One of the neat things about um, Taylor Mill is that they have a, the biggest, possibly, um, Hanner's Heroes connection with high school and that um, is another means for those st students who may not have transportation to actually be involved in another way so it's very very wonderful so I'd like to um, say I've learned a lot in these six months I've learned a lot about the students and the culture of our school and I think that um, it's wonderful that I have had the opportunity to create and to participate in that meaningful connection. 
Just in closing, just one other thing I'd like to say. I know many of you know that at Taylor Mill, I worked very hard to, and, and Mrs. Carpenter, I, I worked very hard so that our students know that if they put forth their best effort and work really hard, and every day I tell them, if you put forth your best effort, that you'll be smarter at the end of the day than you are at this very moment. And to me, I think that's something really important for them to know and to understand. And they do understand it because, thanks to Deneen, we were given an ornament the other day at the principal's meeting, and the words from the students were on mine, smart and getting smarter. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important mm -hmm. that our students know that. Because you know what? If they believe it, guess what? It's true. Mm -hmm. And they're going to work really hard to get smarter. Thank you. Well, um, <laughs> this is actually my two-week anniversary, so I uh, have been principal for two weeks effective today. <laughs> Um, and wanted to just kind of give you guys an idea for what we're doing for the remainder of the school year and um, trying to get our kids up to our overall goal which is growth for all of our students it's a little bit a little bit beyond what our, our district goal one is with just getting students up to grade level which certainly that is still our, our goal for students who are not at grade level but we're also concentrating within the school about getting students who are currently on grade level moving forward and students who are currently above grade level we don't want them remaining stagnant either we want them moving forward as well um, due to some unfortunate events that happened earlier in the school year um, you may notice that a few of the things that I'm I'm getting ready to talk about some of the other middle schools um, may have kind of spoken in past tense that they have already they've already been doing that they're already in that process um, Due to those events that happened, we are at the point right now where we are beginning some of those processes academically. And so there's actually two different components of what I was going to talk about today, one being the academics with the teaching and learning, and the other being the climate issues within the building. Um, the first one that we actually started pretty immediately going into the schools with meeting with all the teachers and hearing from the teachers on where we were currently in the academic side of things, um, we started last week with our goal setting for students based off their MAP scores. Um, MAP testing, and I think everyone will tell you, I get really wound up about it. I get really passionate. If I had two hours, I could take two hours with you on MAP testing and, and the ways we could use that to move our students forward. But we started last week with uh, talking about using the national normative data to set student goals. And um, the expectation has been laid down for, for teachers, and I have their plans on how they're going to do that goal setting within the first week of January, uh, based off of their latest MAP assessments. Um, the questions, it was very nice to hear because we were already thinking along the lines of, okay, will students know where they are, but what are they gonna do with that information? And how are they gonna grow? How are they gonna reach these goals that they've set for them? And it was nice because the teachers were coming to us saying that same thing. You know, we, we have the structure in place for RTI, but we don't know that we're using it effectively what can we do so our first week that we come back in january begging for no snow days so mm -hmm. if you've got any influence there are no snow days um, we're going to start pretty immediately uh, the second day we come back with job embedded time where we can model what good instruction during that rti time looks like uh, so they can take that back and replicate that during their rti time um, we're going to show them, instead of us just doing it for them, we're going to work together in one big group and show them what it looks like to flexible group your students so every student in those areas are with their current needs. Um, and that's ultimately how we hope to move every student is during those structures. Um, excuse me. Compass Learning will be a big part of us doing that. Um, Descartes, which is a component within the uh, map testing, once they have their map scores, they get a, a skill base. Th these are the skills that they need to be working on. We'll be using both of those components to get at what those skills are that those students knew, need to, to move forward. Um, let's see. The RTI for the, the level two is another component. Those structures are already in place in the school. Um, for fast math in the morning for students who struggle with math, uh, for the Read 180 and System 44, which I'm sure you've already heard about from the other schools. Uh, those structures are already in place. I, th I think one of the things that we've seen since I've been in the last couple of weeks, I, I'm hearing from <coughs> teachers and just kind of assessing as we go on, is ways that we can uh, kind of refine and um, ultimately restructure that to use some of our resources 
the best way that we can. That's, that's computer resources, technology resources, that's people and time resources, just so we really can get the most bang for our buck out of the use of that time. So that's one of the things that we're going to be pretty quickly looking at what we need to do with those tier two interventions to make those more effective. Um, beyond that with goal two, um, we have the goals that we're doing starting off uh, each of us 10 PPR walks per week, which will ultimately get, give us each 40 per month with teachers. And when I say the PPR walks, I mean PPR walks with feedback, with coaching feedback, not just a classroom visit, hey, I'm coming in and, and I'm here. <laughs> but that, you know, here's what I see in your classroom, here's what I like, here's what I would like to see next time, here's some points to consider. And, um, and we've kind of divvied up the who's giving coaching and we'll change that as we go through on who's giving coaching feedback to who. Um, we also want to closely monitor what's been going on with Springboard and we um, are in talks with the consultants to get the consultants in with us to do some of those walks with teachers so teachers can see, hey, this is what's happening in this other classroom. Because I think I've learned personally so much as an administrator because I've been able to see so many classrooms. I'd be a much better math teacher if I went back in a math classroom now versus when I was in the room. Because you get so closed off in, in your classroom. So we're going to try to break that down for springboard because I think they feel like first year teachers all over again. So this will give them the opportunity. We actually had that going on today um, where we have Jenny in the, in, with our teachers going classroom to classroom and we're going to be a part of that in the future as well where we'll be with those math teachers and language arts teachers pointing out, did you see this? I saw this. What did you see? And talking about those effective ways that they can continue to uh, use Springboard um, and use those stream, same strategies with MDC and LDC as we go forward just so they know that's a big focus for us is that effective instruction in the classroom. Um, another thing that I, I think we very quickly need to address uh, in January and it, it has come up in several conversations is the failure rate that we have currently. Um, you, you may have noticed, I don't know if you have, have seen the data, we're not real, real pleased with the data that we've seen at Woodland with our failure rate so that's something that we're very quickly going to address with why aren't our students learning and why are we failing them at the rate that we are and what are we going to do about it and we have a few different ideas involved in ways that we can step in and make sure that they are learning where they're not because if we don't do something now the end of the year they're not going to miraculously just <laughs> know it before the end of the year gets here so we have a few plans in place to do some PLCs and job embedded trainings with teachers on addressing some of those. Um, <laughs> The other, I talked about those two big plates that we had spinning there, one with the um, academics and the other with the climate. Over into the climate area, um, I, we have a full-time psychologist now that just added last week. Mr. Adam Leinke is working with us full-time and he has been a big help and we've been using him as part of our administrative team. And we meet daily, meet daily to discuss the um, mental wellness of our students and also talk about plans for what will we do with character education, with um, behavior education, with bullying education, and all the different components that are all in that climate feature to help those reduce those barriers to students actually learning that academic side. Um, we also have added, that we'll be adding soon, uh, two days with a social worker and one extra day from a North Key counselor will be starting very very soon in January. Um, we have components set up now and we actually began this month with different modules for character education, behavior education, and bullying all kind of within the same realm on teaching the, the behaviors that we want to see and those will be counselors going into classrooms with every student's monthly and also we've increased the number of small group um, with students who are at risk for various reasons, increase the number of at-risk students. We'll have the social workers, psychologists, guidance counselors that will be working with those small groups on that. Um, we have, we started last week, a more streamlined bully reporting system. One of the things that um, we ha had kind of noticed, and, and through some research too, when we were at a middle school conference together, we noticed that a lot of students were saying they weren't reporting bullying because they didn't want it to come off like they were a snitch or they were a tattletale so they weren't necessarily going to administration on that and that's not just 
our school. That's nationwide. That's what they see with students who are not reporting it. So one of the things that we very quickly did was, um, right now it's, um, it's, it's being worked on. It's not as student friendly language as we want it to be ultimately. But we do have a form that we've been following right now that when students are to report they're going to guidance counselors. And those counselors are working with the students on more of those, um, if you're being victimized, what can I do for you? What can we do to make you feel safe? And then administration gets the aspect of, okay, now what do we do with, you know, the discipline of the person who is bullying? And is there an education component to that? Did he or she know that what they were doing was considered bullying? So we, we're trying to come up with a more streamlined approach that gets at the education standpoint and, the, and it gets to the needs of our victims as well as the people who are bullying. Um, at that, <laughs> I'm going to turn it over because Mr. Shackers had a lot of really positive um, steps that he's taken with CASID committee this year and I thought I would let him highlight some of that for the next five minutes. I told you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, as Ms. Owens uh, mentioned, we we are a KSID school, as is every school in our district now, um, implementing different PBIS strategies. Last year was Woodland's first year as a KSID school, and um, I, I have to brag on our staff, not just our staff, but our KSID committee. They've done just a tremendous amount of work and a lot of hard work and put time uh, into this throughout last year and into this year. Um, I think that's reflected on the when we had our district team implementation checklist scores this year, last year when we had those done in March, uh, we had a score of 27, which put us in the tertiary range, which is in the, the 5%, which is not, not what you want. You want to be able to be into the universal, which is 80% or higher. This year, when we had it done in October um, throughout the district, our score was an 86 which put us as the third highest score in the district out of all schools, elementary, middle, and high. So we're very proud of that. Uh, now, how did we make that happen? Um, like I said, it's been a lot of work, um, but we've put that in and um, we've had a lot of positive things and results from that, from our KSID committee and implementing this school-wide. Our, our Discipline referrals are down 72% this year. Uh, we were almost averaging at this time last year eight referrals per day, and that, it, that is down to 1.8 referrals per day. Um, as I said before, that can be attributed to the staff um, and not just the classroom certified teachers, but every adult in the building. Uh, we've implemented a positive behavior plan where we teach everything from our three expectations at Woodland, which are be respectful, be responsible, and be safe. So no matter what location these students are going to in the building, whether it be in our common areas that we're focusing on, such as the cafeteria and the hallways, or it could be in their classrooms, whether it's PE or math or social studies, they are learning their behavioral expectations from those three main expectations. Um, Additionally, like I mentioned, we've implemented some PBIS strategies. We have now a school-wide, it's a token system, where we have, you can't see it from there, it's called Cat's Cash. And we came up with that as in because we wanted it to be just a, a positive plan, not, not part of that punitive component, uh, but positive for the students. So, and all adults in the building participate in this, this strategy, this plan. Um, whether it be our custodians, our secretaries, the classroom teachers, us, every, everybody who, who is in contact with students. And it simply works as that if a student is following expectations, if they are doing things that, that we want them to do, uh, they receive, they can get cat's cash. And then what they do with that is at least once a week, every Thursday, we have during lunchtime called the Woodland Warehouse, where it is uh, the, st the students run this. Um, they they come down and they're able to during their lunchtime. Should I keep going or should I just wait? Pretty loud. <laughs> okay. Um, and they are able to redeem the cat's cash for different things that we pulled the students last year in a survey to find out what would they like 
to be able to have in this woodland warehouse and be able to get things such as a hat pass for one day. Um, to go through, we can, they can use it to get a pass to the next dance. Some, especially for this time of year, we have students who want to buy um, where we've gotten through donations, uh, like a card that they can get for their, their parents or their brother or sister because we do have students who they don't have the financial means to go out and make that happen. So now they're able to utilize that through our positive behavior plan. And that's, that's been very positive with them. Um, it's something that obviously we're going to continue with as the case in committee you know we have representation from not just every team in the building uh, but also from the special education department as well as parent representation and student representation so we want to involve all stakeholders and because as we said this is it's a team effort to make things the way that we want them to be to where then we can focus on what Ms. Owens mentioned, which was that first issue, and, and that's so students are learning, and they're learning mm -hmm. at least everyone at grade level. Okay. I have one question for you. When you were talking about the failure rate, do you find that it's a, like an area of failure where there's a lot of kids failing one area, or do you find that it's a group of children who are failing a lot of things. Um, it is typically a few children who are failing a lot of things. And um, so it's a real targeted group mm -hmm. then. That yeah. Yeah. And that's just with the initial mm -hmm. initial pull of numbers. And it seems to be heavier in eighth grade than the others. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I think we do have a few strategies to deal with that because my fear is that if we don't do anything, how will they be successful this quarter, or this trimester? Right. How are they going to be successful the next trimester? Because all the information is going to build on itself. So we've got to get in and remediate and remediate quickly on what they're, they're missing. <laughs> Yeah. And also, if I could add to where we were utilizing the MAP scores and be able to identify why are they failing. Is it because we have students who are below grade level and they're not getting the content? Is it because you know, it may be reflected that they're very much at grade level? So maybe it's uh, some type of issue of effort and whether that we go back to the student services part to where we need to relieve some barrier on why they're not being successful. I want to thank you for your presentation and you. wish you well on your refocusing <laughs> Woodland, yeah. get it back on track. And publicly, I'd like to state that Superintendent uh, Cox Curry has made an excellent choice. And with her team, I think Woodland will be successful. Thank so, you. best wishes. Thank you.